Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Keystone Virtual College Exploration. Uh, this program is a partnership between PACAC and StriveScan for all Pennsylvania students. My name is Liz Frasini. I'm a college counselor at Wyoming Seminary in Kingston, Pennsylvania. I'm also the chair of the College Fairs Committee for PACAC, and I'm excited to welcome you today. Before we get started, uh, if you do have questions for our presenter this evening, you can use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and he'll make sure to get to them throughout the session. Also, your, uh, we are using the webinar feature of Zoom, so your cameras and microphones are off for the duration of the program. The panelists cannot see or hear you, so please use that Q&A box to ask your question. And then you signed up for this evening session at the PACAC website. And you can sign up for additional sessions for a few more days through November 6th. If you'd like to view a recording of this session or any others from our program since October 1st, you can do so at www.pacac.org slash virtual. And now I will turn it over to Stephen from the College of New Jersey. Thank you so much, Liz, and good evening, everyone. Uh, give me just one moment. I'm going to take over the screen here so we can jump into business. Okay, so I'm stealing the screen. I am going to play my slideshow here. Come on. All right, now we're in business. Okay, good evening again. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day in such a crazy time uh, to move your college search process forward and learn a little bit about the College of New Jersey, TCNJ. Um, let's see if I can get my slides to move, okay. Uh, my name is Stephen Tomkeel. I'm the Senior Admissions Counselor for the College of New Jersey, and I am the liaison for any students coming out of a Pennsylvania high school. Um, so I want to introduce myself this evening, not only as your admissions presenter, but really as a point of contact. Uh, the college search process is big. It can be overwhelming. There are so many incredible schools, but they all do things a little bit differently, uh, especially, again, in, in this environment where a lot of the communication is being managed virtually or through email, and there's not as much face-to-face. -face. I think having a human being on the other side of the desk in the college environment that you can connect with when you, when you have a question or a moment of confusion can really help you keep your momentum up and really help you ultimately be successful in this process. Um, so I have my contact information on the screen here, my email address, and my personal booking link if you ever wanted to set up a one-to-one -one chat with me. Um, so I encourage you to screenshot this if you need it. I will bring it back up at the, uh, again at the end. Um, I know that there will be questions coming into the chat. I encourage you to use the chat function to let me know any questions that you have. Um, it is a little bit hard for me to see the questions coming in when I'm in this kind of presenter mode, um, but there are a couple distinct moments during my presentation where I'll stop, I'll pause, we'll take a breath, and I'll see any questions that may um, be out there in the open for me to help with. Um, but just to dive right in, because I really want to be respectful of your time and the fact um, that you all did take time out of your evenings to, to, to be here and learn about the College of New Jersey today, um, I want to start by talking about the name of the institution itself. Um, I was an English major when I went through my undergraduate career. So I love language. I love unpacking words. I love finding significant meaning uh, within phrases. And I think there really is significant meaning in the name of my institution. So again, I'm the College of New Jersey. And the first big piece that I focus on is actually that back half. The fact that we are the College of New Jersey gives you some useful info right out of the gate. Um, number one, it tells you our location, right? So uh, we're located in Ewing, New Jersey, E-W-I-N-G. It's right smack dab in the middle of New Jersey. It's a cool location because the campus itself is very suburban residential. I mean, you'll see in some of the images that'll come up throughout this presentation, we have the green, we have the brick buildings. When you're at TCNJ, you're on a classic East Coast campus. Um, but because we are really right in the middle of New Jersey, we give you access to kind of everything the East Coast has to offer. We're very uh, well connected to public transit. We can get you down to Philadelphia in about 45 minutes. You can be up in New York City in about an hour, an hour 15 minutes. Uh, we're an hour from the Jersey Shore. We're two hours from the Pocono Mountains if you like to hike or ski or snowboard. Um, so we give you that classic campus experience, but we also give you access to everything beyond that. And we encourage our students, you know, get out there, explore. We're in such an incredible region. We want students to take advantage of that. Uh, but arguably the more important piece coming out of the fact that we are the College of New Jersey, um, that's going to signal for you all that TCNJ is a public school, right? We work very closely with the state of New Jersey. We get funding and support from the state every year. But something that makes us really different is that we are smaller than most public institutions. So there's right around 7,000 undergraduate students on our campus. That translates to a student faculty ratio of 13 to 1, so 13 students for every professor. Average class size in a classroom at TCNJ is right around 20, 21 students. Most likely not going to be too much larger than what you are all seeing in that physical classroom space when you're in your high school environment. 
Um, so really in terms of kind of the size and feel of our campus, it's more intimate, it's more close knit. It may actually remind you of some of the private institutions that you're considering as part of your search process. Um, but because we are a public school at the end of the day, we're also offering higher level opportunities and resources that are typically associated with larger public institutions. Things like study abroad. TCNJ has the number one rated study abroad program in the state of New Jersey, typically rated among the top 50 programs nationwide. We've got, we've got great internship opportunities, again, being right between New York City and Philly, undergraduate research, nursing clinical, student teaching, all those higher level experiences people expect from the big guys. We give you access to those experiences, but because we are that little bit smaller, really you have more direct access. Everything's right there at your fingertips. You get incredible support network. You have an academic advisor from your major, faculty mentors you're meeting in the classroom, career center staff, uh, center for student success. You get an entire team behind you to kind of keep you moving forward as you work towards articulating and achieving your academic and professional goals. And the other piece that I would be remiss if I did not mention is that as a public school, our cost structure is going to be lower uh, than the wide majority of private schools that you're gonna look at as part of your search process. You will see exceptions to every rule, right? You'll see higher cost uh, public schools, you'll see lower cost privates, but nine times out of 10, TCNJ is gonna beat the cost structure of just about any private school that you're looking at. Uh, and so if you, if you put that all together in my mind, really TCNJ is kind of occupying an interesting middle ground in between the public and private models of education, where again, we're small and intimate like the private school, but we have the big opportunities and the lower costs associated with public institutions. Um, and I think because we go for that kind of best of both worlds approach, uh, we're really offering a, a high value proposition to our students. And this is something where TCNJ receives accolades, you know, year after year in the sense that really high return on an investment for students who choose to pursue their educational career with us, uh, really high value in terms of the experience you're getting, you know, connecting with faculty mentors, getting advantage um, in terms of accessing professional development and opportunities for personal growth. And so for all of those reasons and more, TCNJ uh, is, has consistently ranked uh, the number one public college and university in our kind of size bracket, that 5,000 to 10,000 student range uh, by Money Magazine. And so if you're looking for that kind of not too big, not too small, just right fit in terms of college size, if you're looking in that 5,000 to 10,000 student space, TCNJ has genuinely been named the best option uh, nationwide for that style of institution. The other piece that comes out of our name very quickly uh, is the fact that we are the College of New Jersey and not the University of New Jersey. And there really is a meaningful distinction there. And so what it comes down to, uh, when at TCNJ, when we say that we are the College of New Jersey, we are a college very specifically, what that signals for you as a student is that we are really 100% committed to the undergraduate experience. Everything we do in our campus is designed to make your next four years, going from a first year student to a senior, earning your bachelor's degree, we want to make that experience as incredible as possible. And so when we build new resources on our campus, um, we built a renovated student center over the past couple of years. We have a brand new STEM complex on our campus that we only opened about three years ago, I believe now. Um, but it's because we want our undergraduate students to take advantage of those spaces. Our undergraduate students are using the student center to get together with their clubs and activities, to, to use the big multi-purpose rooms to put together events and share their passions with our community. Um, our undergraduate science and engineering students, as early as their first year on campus, are in those lab and research spaces in the STEM complex. They're not waiting until they're a senior or a grad student to do meaningful research with a professor. It's something they have access to pretty much from day one, because again, everything we do on our campus is designed specifically to, to really enfranchise and empower are you as an undergraduate student seeking a bachelor's degree over the course of four years? Um, and so that, that's kind of like the 10,000 foot level stuff in terms of who we are and what we do at TCNJ. Again, we're that perfect balance of public and private where it's small and intimate, but with big opportunities and low costs. And then we have that strong undergraduate focus. Uh, the other major theme I want to talk about is our academic infrastructure. And really the big takeaway here is that every student who enrolls at TCNJ benefits from an incredibly personalized academic experience. Uh, this is something that starts again in the classroom, the fact that we are smaller in size. Um, as I mentioned earlier, average class size, 2021 20, students. I think potentially the even more interesting statistic is that you will never find a classroom space at TCNJ that's larger than about 35 or 40 students. We don't have the big 200 person lecture hall. It's not our style. When you're in the classroom at TCNJ, the professor knows who you are. And I can speak to that from my own experience. I actually um, have taught writing courses at TCNJ. I, I teach intro writing courses for first year students. Um, and even though the, the course that I teach, Writing 102, is one of the most foundational and required courses that almost every first year student takes, TCNJ facilitates enough course sections and enough instructors for that course um, that in the last year, I had 16 students in my classroom. And I knew everybody by the end of week one. 
And I remember very distinctly Eli, who ended up being one of my best students, he missed the second night of class. Uh, but the class was small enough that within a half hour of, of ending that session, I knew he wasn't there. I sent him the email. Hey, bud, we missed you. Here's the readings we covered. Let's make a plan to get you caught up. And that's exactly what happened. He came to my office hours the next week. Every professor at TCNJ offers open office hours. Their door is open to meet with students who have questions or concerns or need support. So we got him caught up. We got him right back on pace. He ended up being incredibly successful in the class. And so that really is the experience of TCNJ. Professors know who you are. They want you to raise a hand and be active in the classroom experience. They want you to work hard. It's a challenging environment to be sure, but you have that personalized connection and support so you can feel comfortable working hard and accomplish, uh, accomplishing really high level achievements as a TCNJ student. Um, we have a really open credit structure, roughly a third of the credit the students take in order to graduate TCNJ are entirely in the elective space. So you can kind of choose your own adventure uh, and work with your advisors to take everything you're passionate about and build it into your four years of study at TCNJ. Um, with that really open credit structure, we see students that are majoring in engineering and minoring in theater or majoring in Spanish language and culture and also pursuing pre-med. Uh, you can really succeed on totally disparate tracks because we, we build interdisciplinary learning as a core component of our educational experience. Uh, another point of personalization is relevant field experience and professional development. And this is really something that every TCNJ student will take advantage of. And of course, it looks a little bit different kind of depending on the student's academic or professional goals. So just to kind of list out a couple quick examples, um, for the average student in science or engineering at TCNJ, that average student's going to do at least two semesters of meaningful research with a faculty member by the time they graduate. Um, in fact, we, we offer a program called MUSE, Mentored Undergraduate Summer Experience, where students can get a stipend, you can get paid to live on campus for an entire summer and you do research full time. And we see incredibly um, meaningful products and projects come out of those experiences. Uh, in the School of Humanities, similarly, many students will take papers or presentations that they're working on for class and they'll partner with their faculty mentors to build those projects out into professional publications. So many of our students are published authors by the time they graduate. Many students are traveling to conferences to present their work to like-minded peers. Um, in the School of Business, the average student does at least two internships by the time they graduate. Again, we're right in between New York City and Philadelphia. Uh, of course, you can always do an internship over the summer, but we see a lot of students take advantage of full semester or full year internships where they're actually uh, commuting to and from the city from our campus. Uh, in, in education, the average student is in the classroom as early as their second year on campus. Uh, by the time they're a senior, every education student does a full semester of full-time student teaching five days a week. Uh, in the School of Nursing, students are in the hospital by year two. The average nursing student has completed over 400 hours of clinical experience by the time they graduate. They're shadowing practitioners. They're working directly with patients. Uh, we see incredibly high NCLEX pass rates from those nursing students because of that exposure they get early on. Um, our artists are exhibiting right on campus. We have beautiful exhibition spaces where students can share their work. Our music students are performing in our Immaculate Concert Hall. Um, so again, no matter what your academic or professional goals are, we put you in the right spaces and connect you with the right people at TCNJ so you can build the resume, build the skill set, really cultivate all the credentials that you'll need um, in order to really stand out when you're graduating and you're thinking about the first job or that competitive grad program or med program. Whatever the goal is, we make sure that you will stand out as an incredibly competitive candidate. Uh, another major way that students personalize their experience is through involvement on campus. We have over 250 clubs and organizations, um, and these opportunities really run the gamut. So if you like to perform, we have acapella groups, we have improv comedy, um, we have cultural, religious, and civic-oriented organizations. So um, student government, uh, we do community service, the Bonner Institute for Civic Engagement. We have the Black Student Union, the Union Latina, the Muslim Student Association. Uh, there are clubs that are totally just for fun. There is a video game club where students play Super Smash Brothers and Apex Legends and Fortnite. There is a uh, circus club where you can learn how to like juggle and ride a unicycle, like whatever your interest is. There's something at TCNJ that's going to line up with that. I think involvement is really special for college students because that's those moments where you're interacting with students outside of your major. That's where you're really going above and beyond to serve as a leader for our community and take the things that you're passionate about and get it in front of other community members. Um, so it's something that the TCNJ puts a lot of energy and investment into and it's something that a lot of our students are taking advantage of. Um, I should also mention that we have an incredible Division Three varsity program for athletics. So my breakdown with D3 is like D1 is incredible, right? D1 is such a huge honor, but it's kind of a full-time job. If you're playing um, a college sport at the D1 level, that sport's kind of your life. At D3, you still compete across the state and across the country for competitions, but you're a student first. 
you're going to class, you're reading your textbook. It's more of a balance between the athletics and academics. So if you're looking for that balance, just know we offer 10 different teams for both men and women's. Um, and in the 30 some years that Division Three has existed, our program has never been ranked below the top three Division Three programs nationwide. So we are genuinely one of the um, best options in the country if you wanna compete at a high level, but still wanna put your academics first. That's really what TCNJ's athletic program is all about. The last point of personalization that I want to discuss before we shift gears and kind of talk about the application process um, is going to be international and global experiences that, that are facilitated through our excellent study abroad program. Uh, so every year, TCNJ sends over 400 different students to 50 plus different countries we partner with. Um, the only major area we don't hit right now, we don't send any students to Antarctica. Never had a ton of interest, but uh, you know, I'm always on the hunt. I want to find a student who wants to go down and study with the penguins. Like, I think that's a great idea. I, I want to make it happen. Uh, but the thing that I love about the study abroad offerings at TCNJ, regardless of what major you're in or where you travel, every study abroad program that we offer is catered to a specific major in academic discipline. And so two quick examples for that. Um, one, every year we send a group of business students to Heidelberg, Germany, Germany being a major economic player in Europe. So these students, they go abroad, they get the cultural experience of, of being in Europe, they take core business courses that satisfy degree requirements, and their coursework is led by TCNJ faculty, and many students will even take on professional opportunities working with local banks or businesses in the area. Another great example, every year we send a group of biology students uh, to the Galapagos Islands, and those students actually follow the trail that Darwin was on when he was crafting his origin of species. And so they're interacting and doing research with these incredibly diverse forms of wildlife as a part of that experience. So when students travel with TCNJ, I mean, these are productive, meaningful experiences. Again, you're getting the cultural piece, you're getting the academic piece, you're getting the professional piece in many, in many instances. Um, and so certainly I encourage any student in any college, look for that study abroad, put yourself in a new environment, expand your cultural palette. It's such a profound opportunity for personal growth. Um, but please know that at TCNJ, it really is something that we're doing at a high level. Yeah, okay, and so at this point, I've kind of covered all the big who we are and what we do items for TCNJ. Um, so I do want to see if there's any questions in the chat. I'm not seeing any right now, but let me sit tight for like 20 seconds just in case anybody has something they're thinking about that they wanted to, to get some information on. Going once, going twice. Okay. I think we're in good shape. Certainly do feel free to continue to use that chat tool to let me know if there are any questions, certainly especially as we shift gears into kind of the application process. Um, I know a lot of students have questions about that. So, so let me know what's going on. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. And so that kind of is the next step, right? Because if the things that I'm saying so far seem good, or if you've been on tour you know, of our campus with one of our, our college ambassadors and you like what you saw, the next big question, the elephant in the room, how do I get in? How do I become a TCNJ lion? And so we're just gonna map the whole gosh darn thing out today uh, while also highlighting some particular advantages available to Pennsylvania students uh, in our process right now. Uh, the first big thing you know, uh, we really try to make it easy and accessible to get your process started with TCNJ. Um, so TCNJ is on both the major multi-school application tools, that's Common Application and Coalition Application. No preference between the two. If you're on either Common App or Coalition for anything that you're doing, just keep doing what you're doing. Add TCNJ to your list, fill out the basic requirements. There really aren't any extra supplements or essay questions. One very short essay is going to ask you why you're applying to TCNJ, and hopefully you have an answer to that if you're going to apply. Uh, but other than that, it's just the basics on the application. You add us to your list, you fill everything out, you hit submit, you're on your way. In addition to those basic items, there are a handful of additional items that round out your profile. We'll talk about each in a little bit of detail. We're going to talk about transcripts, demonstrated interest, extracurricular activities, letters of recommendation, and the personal essay. We'll also talk about standardized test scores, SAT and ACT, but the big spoiler here is that TCMJ has gone test optional officially, and so SAT, ACT are not going to be an essential part of our process necessarily. Transcript will be an essential part of the process. And this is true no matter what school you're applying to, no matter what major you're interested in. Research has shown the most reliable data in predicting a student's ability to succeed in the college environment is what they're doing on their high school transcript because it's that day in, day out, consistent performance and growth over the course of four years. Uh, when we look at your transcript, we look at a lot of the things that you probably expect. We look for core academic units, right? Are you taking a nice mix of math, science, English language, art, social sciences, history, foreign language? We look for rigor. We love to see students who take on that challenge, take on the, the honors, the AP, the IB. 
Um, the one thing that we do a little bit differently in the context of your transcript is that TCNJ will look at your transcript uh, in the context of your desired major. And now you don't need to know exactly what you want when you're applying. We do offer a holistic undeclared program where students can explore every major on our campus in their first two years. We also offer undeclared options within each of our academic schools. So if you know you want something in that business space, you can do undeclared business. And in those first two years, try the accounting class, try the econ class, see what you like, pick your major when you're ready. Uh, but most students are going to apply with a specific major in mind. And honestly, that, that'll be to the benefit of most students. And kind of the, the corny joke that I make along these lines is if I see a student who's applying to engineering, you know, I'm expecting that they're going to feel good about their math and physics. And I'm really zooming in on that coursework. And so if I see the student has C's and D's in math and physics, I'm kind of starting to ask myself if they totally understand what it means to be an engineer, right? And so the takeaway here is, if you're applying into a major that lines up with your strengths and interests, it really can be to the benefit of your application. In terms of what we tend to see on the transcript, most admitted students are thinking that a healthy mix of A's and B's. Uh, one C here, there, not the end of the world, but definitely mostly A's and B's. And we are, again, looking for some level of rigor, some level of honors, AP, IV, dual enrollment, depending on what's offered at your high school. Next piece is demonstrated interest. And demonstrated interest is this like, exact thing that's happening right now. Again, the fact that you were all willing to take time out of your evening in such like a stressful, crazy time for school and the world and everything. And you said, no, I'm going to take a half hour. I want to learn about TCNJ. I want to push my college search process forward. It shows you're taking this process seriously. It shows that you have a sense of intentionality. Um, and that really does have value for us at TCNJ because we want to admit students who understand the benefits of a TCNJ education, understand how our, our major offerings and how our field experience opportunities are going to benefit them academically and professionally. And so that's why I'm always encouraging students to stay connected throughout the process. Again, I'll put my email, my personal booking link up at the end, screenshot it, grab any info that will be helpful. But if you stay connected, let me know what questions you have. Let me know kind of where you are in the process. That way, when I read your application, I have a better sense of who you are and, and your active interest your active understanding of what we're all about at TCNJ. Um, we're going to look at your activities. My advice here is you might want to build a resume for yourself. Go, go to the application first, honestly. I go to Common App, go to Coalition, and look at their activity sheet. If you have enough room in that act activity sheet to list out all of your clubs and organizations, you can talk about years of service, you can talk about leadership positions and other ways that you've gone above and beyond extracurricularly. If it all fits in the application itself, you're golden, you're good, you're done. But if there's any reason why you feel constrained or limited by that space you're being given in the common application or coalition application, just know that you can make your own resume. You can build a resume for yourself. You can look at templates online. You can look at moms or dads or at counselors. But if you make the document for yourself from scratch, you get a little power back. You can reorganize the information so all the most important experiences are right up top in big, bold font. And you have as much space as you need. You can put every bullet point on the page. You can really talk about the things that have been meaningful to you in detail. And this is valuable to us because, again, at TCNJ, we have over 250 clubs and organizations. We'd love to see students get involved. So when we see that commitment and leadership in the high school environment, we know that you can come to our campus to continue to do great things in that context. We are going to look at letters of recommendation. You need to send in at least two. You can send up to three. Number three is optional. Letter one is going to come from a counselor. Their job is to give me the big picture context behind your transcript. And make sure to talk to your counselor. Get on the same page. It's their letter to write, but make sure they know where you're kind of coming from. Talk about the things you're really proud of that they can maybe highlight. Talk about maybe there's a course where things didn't go so well because you got really sick and you missed two weeks of school and the grade kind of sank as a result. They can help kind of explain that context as long as you help them understand the context. Context. So again, they're going to write the letter that they feel is most appropriate, but make sure that you are connecting with them and getting on the same page as part of that process. Uh, you're going to get a letter from a teacher. My advice here is find the teacher who's going to go to bat for you, not just the teacher that lines up with the major you want, right? So if you're going to apply to bio, and the only thing that your bio teacher in high school can tell me is your attendance record and your final grade, there's better letters out there. Maybe it's actually your history teacher or your lacrosse coach or your choir director who knows who you are, knows how you interact with others, can speak to your personal strengths. That's the better letter 10 times out of 10 because they're going to take the time to really fight for you. So find that teacher who's in your corner. Get them to write the letter. Finally, third letter, totally optional, can come from anybody, a boss at work, a community organizer, could be another teacher. The only person who cannot write you the letter, and it's going to sound silly, it's going to sound obvious, but we see it every year. No letter from mom and dad, no letter from grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle. I'm sure they'd love to write like a novella of all the incredible things you've done, but they're a little biased, right? So, so I can't read it, don't have them write it. Again, one counselor, one teacher, third is optional, no family. 
Final required piece is going to be the essay. Again, this is the default essay that's built right in the Common App and Coalition application. Really, you can write about anything. And, and this is honestly my advice and my takeaway. And it sounds so corny, but I encourage you to really take it seriously. The essay has to come from the heart. It's, it's, it's true. It's human nature. We as humans communicate more effectively when we have an active investment in the information that we're communicating. So before you start writing your essay, take an hour, take a day, take however much time you need to reflect, really think through the experiences that have been impactful for you, the values that you believe define you or set you apart from others. And if you go to write that essay and you have that really meaningful topic in mind, all of a sudden you get energetic and excited and all that energy and excitement, it finds its way onto the page and it makes you a stronger writer. So take that time, find a topic that is truly impactful and you will write a stronger essay as a result. So those are the required items. Um, I do want to talk about test scores very quickly. Again, TCNJ is going test optional this year. It will be test optional for the next three years. We, we've always known the SAT and ACT has tended to work better for certain types of students than others. And there's so many access issues going on right now. So we really wanted to, to just kind of streamline our process and make things more accessible for students. So, so we did this test optional move. Um, I, I'm very upfront in terms of my take on the whole test optional thing. And, and, and here's where I come from with it. Historically, most admitted students at TCNJ would score between about 1200 to 1350 for a two part SAT math and reading super score that translates to roughly 26 to 29 for a composite ACT. Um, so if you've taken the test and you're in those ranges and you want to send the score, you feel it's a good reflection of who you are, there's no reason not to. Absolutely, we'll take a look at it. It'll add to your application. But if for any reason you couldn't take the test or you took the test and the score that you got is just not at all a true reflection of who you are as a student, skip it. Don't send it. There's so many other great ways to understand who that perfect TCNJ candidate is, right? I, I, already, I just talked through all those different application pieces. We're looking at your transcript. We're looking at your demonstrated interest. We look at your letter to recommendation. We don't need the test scores. They're not an essential part of the process. So take them or leave them entirely based on your experience in the testing environment. Um, very quickly with that out of the way, I want to talk about a couple special majors that might be slightly different in their process. So if you're applying to either art or music programs, you do need to provide um, a portfolio or an audition to showcase your talent. Um, the Educational Opportunity EOF Fund program is specific to New Jersey residents, so I'm going to skip that piece. Um, I do want to talk about the seven-year accelerated medical program. We do offer an accelerated med program at TCNJ where students do three years on our campus and go right to NJMS for their four years of med school. It's an articulation agreement between the two schools, which really streamlines the process. You don't have to submit a formal application to the med school. You take the MCATs for statistical purposes only. It's not like a make or break moment. Um, it is an earlier deadline. You have to apply by November 1 for this program because there are additional essays to submit. Um, there are interview rounds. So just know with that accelerated med program, if that's something you're looking for, you have to get everything in early and you have to be ready for a slightly longer application timeline. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to cover the deadlines. And the last thing I want to talk about, because I know I'm coming up against time here, I do want to talk about advantages available to out-of-state students right now. Um, so we just passed our early decision one deadline, although if you've already started a common app or coalition app, you haven't submitted yet, but you're in the system, um, send me an email and I can still get you in for early decision one if TCNJ is a top choice for you. We do a second early decision deadline of January one. Um, early decision is the binding decision. So when you apply to TCNJ early decision, you're saying absolutely TCNJ is my number one top choice. If I, if I accepted, I'm ready to commit. I'm gonna withdraw any other applications. There is an earlier notification window because of, the, of that early decision model. So November 1 students here back in the first week of December, January 1 students here back in the first week of February. So you can have your whole process kind of done and dusted before a lot of your friends in school. Most students apply general admission. I was a general admission student when I was going through the process. I wanted to do some comparison shopping and look at all my options. So with general admission, you have all the way until February 1. So February 1 of 2021 for my seniors to get the application in. I always encourage you to get it in early. It gives you more time. You just kind of cross your T's, dot your I's, make sure you're getting all the required items in. You know, it gives you more time to ask questions. Um, for out-of-state students, I always say there's a soft priority deadline of roughly December 1. So if typically for students who apply before December 1, we can notify you in mid-January or early February. So you can get about a month head start because ultimately most general admission candidates are notified in mid-March or no later than the first week of April. And so while we're on the housekeeping items, I mean, we just covered the timeline, I do want to talk about advantages available to PA students right now, because we're really trying to grow our out-of-state population. Um, as a public school in New Jersey, most of our students are from New Jersey. And now I've lived in, in New Jersey my entire life. Like, I love New Jersey. I love New Jersey kids. I think we're a great campus community. We want more geographic diversity. We want students from everywhere. So there are some real advantages right now. 
Uh, number one, you get direct access to our admissions office throughout your process. And I really am that access. So, so here's my contact info again. Again, screenshot it if you need it. Write down my email, write down my booking link. As a out-of-state recruiter, I kind of have a smaller caseload than my colleagues in New Jersey. You know, I was joking to Liz before this presentation started. I wasn't sure if anybody was going to come and check me out tonight. And I'm so glad that you all did. And so because I work with a smaller number of students, really, anytime you have a question, send me that email, make a call, book me on my calendar. You know, you're going to be my priority. I want to make sure that you have all the information that you need to feel comfortable and confident throughout the application process. Um, I would be the one reading your application as well. And so the better that I know the students who are applying to, to TCNJ from PA, the more I can kind of fight for you, right? You know, I'm going to look beyond just the transcript itself. I'm going to really dive deep into your letters of recommendation. I'm going to look through your involvement, your personal statements. I'm going to find everything that makes you a great candidate and really push that forward to my admissions review committee. You got to hold up your end of the bargain. You got to keep working hard. You got to, you got to put your best foot forward in the application. But if you do that, I really will be in your corner throughout the process. Um, Out-of-state students are guaranteed on-campus housing for all four years. People want to be on campus at TCNJ. They want to be near our great dining hall and classes and clubs and everything. So most students who only guarantee on-campus housing for two years. Um, but since you're coming a little bit further away, did, potentially, you, you honestly, depending on where you are in PA, you might be closer than like our North North Jersey kids. But in any case, you get to bed right in the center of the action all four years, absolutely guaranteed. Uh, you have the opportunity to get a fee waiver. So every PA student can talk to their guidance counselor and get sponsored to knock out $75 application fee. So especially like if you were kind of on the fence, maybe you want to apply to CCNJ, you're not totally sure. If it's not going to cost you anything and we're already built right in a common app and coalition, you know, it's really easy to get that process started with us. So I really do recommend talk to your counselor. And if they're not sure about the waiver process, have them email me and I'll sort it all out. But then the biggest advantage for out of state uh, and the one that I want to make sure I mention here before we wrap up is that we are making a lot of um, changes to our cost structure right now at TCNJ to make it more affordable for out of state. And so kind of to, to give you the history, typically um, out of state tuition at TCNJ was about $10,000 higher than in-state. So tuition, room board, everything would start at about $42,000, $43,000 per year. Um, but to try to make TCNJ more accessible than ever to as many students as possible, we readjusted our tuition. So tuition is being scaled back by about $7,000. So the way the new cost structure is going to work, tuition and fees will come out to about $22,000 per year. Room and board will be about $14,000 per year. So the entire cost of attendance will start at about $36,000 per year. Um, that really is very close to what our in-state students are currently paying. And chances are that's going to be a cost figure. It's like in the ballpark with some of your great options in your home state. Uh, but then you can even bring it down further. So we're going to be offering merit and need-based scholarships that will be valued anywhere from $1,000 up to a potential max of $6,000. Um, typically a merit scholar is someone who's like top 20% of their graduating class or above in the high school. Again, you can qualify for funding through need-based aid as well. We do a separate need-based process beyond just like the federal aid you get from FAFSA. Um, and so if you are earning a merit scholarship, and especially if you're eligible for federal aid on top of that, it, it's incredibly realistic that your cost at TCNJ could be less than $30,000 a year. And at that point, I mean, really, you're like neck and neck with our in-state residents. And chances are, that's going to be a pretty competitive cost structure compared to some of the excellent options that you all have in the state of Pennsylvania. And like, that's totally intentional, right? Like you can probably tell, I can sit here and brag about DCNJ all night. I'm, I'm already past my allotted time. I could go on and on. I promise I will not, but I certainly could. Um, I love the small classes. I love the hands-on experience, things like the internships and the research. I love the awesome study abroad. And so we can offer all that to you at a cost structure that really is in the ballpark and kind of worth talking about in relation to some of the other great schools that you're seeing closer to home. I mean, like that is like my main goal as an out-of-state recruiter. That's like what gets me out of bed in the morning. And so that's exactly what we're doing with our new cost and scholarship program. Okay, so I think that's everything. Let me look at the Q&A one more time. I didn't get any questions. Oh, I either did really good or you guys are surfing between like three or four different presentations and maybe, you know, trying to watch some TV and live your life in the background, which is totally understandable. Again, like I know you guys have so many different pressures and, and things going on right now. Oh, I did get a question. Oh, thank you, Casey. What are food plans like? Excellent question. Um, so students do not go hungry at TCNJ. Uh, we have a great dining hall on our campus. It's, it's a market style where you get into the dining hall and it's like there's a Mexican place at one end where you can get a burrito and a quesadilla. There's a grill station where you can get a hamburger or a chicken sandwich. There's like a home cook station where you get like the kind of food that your mom and dad would cook. Um, there's a student center with great little restaurants in it. We have um, a Starbucks cafe in our library. So lots of places to eat. 
In terms of what the meal plan looks like, you can, you can really build it however you want. Um, so you can do it by um, a certain number of meals in a semester. So if you know that you're going to eat 100 meals in the dining hall in a semester, you can do that. You can do it by weeks. You can say, I want, you know, 15 meals in a week and the other meals all kind of go off campus or go food shopping. Um, you can do um, blanche, carte blanche, I think it's called, where it's literally unlimited, as many meals as you want, swipe in any time. Um, so you choose the meal plan that's the best fit for you. Obviously, the fewer meals on your plan, the lower the costs are. Um, but ultimately, like, you're not going to go hungry. We, we keep our students fed. That much I can guarantee. Great question. Any other questions before we wrap up here? Oh, I see another one. Uh, what, is, what is the distance for the dorms in the school? Great question. Another great question, Casey. And like minimal. Um, so the way that our campus map is lined out, all the academic buildings are like right in the center. And the residence halls are kind of on the outside of the circle. Like our whole campus is like a, a circle with like a two mile circumference, basically. Um, so really like the average walk to class is like five minutes. And if you go literally from one end of campus to the other, it's maybe 10 to 12 minutes max, maybe 15 if you stop to say hi to a friend that you know from class or a professor that you know, which happens often. We're a really friendly campus. Um, but yeah, like there's no bus system. Most students walk. You can do the longboard. You can do the scooter. You can do the bike. But honestly, most students are just walk in it because it really is such an easy and manageable campus to get around on. Excellent question. Casey, you're crushing it. I love these. Any other questions as we're getting ready to wrap here? This has been a great session. And again, at the very least, I hope you all took down my contact information. Um, definitely look at visit.tcnj.edu. Um, as well, because there are a lot of virtual and on campus opportunities to come visit right now. And again, we love that demonstrated interest. We definitely want you to come and connect. Uh, oh, I do see another question. Uh, can you repeat what you said about the application being waived? Absolutely, yes. So, all um, Pennsylvania students potentially applying to TCNJ have the opportunity to apply with a fee waiver. And so, Annie, the way that fee waiver process works, talk to your gu uh, guidance counselor and they can sponsor you to knock out the $75 application fee. And so there's just a simple online form they would fill out. They should have already received it if they get messages from TCNJ. Um, if the guidance counselor is not sure about that process, have them email me directly um, and I can just send them the online form, but it's really easy to get set up. And then that way it's like one less thing you have to worry about for the application. Um, and I'll put my email in the chat too. So that way, um, if you missed it, I'll put that slide up again, but I'll also put it in the chat. So if you need my contact info, you can grab it. Oh, you know what? I don't think I can put it in the chat. I don't think the chat works that way for this session. But again, it's here. So please do screenshot. Um, and then I think that might've been it. So Liz, I'm going to tag out. Let me know if there's any other housekeeping items uh, you wanted to cover. Oh, any. It does help if you have, uh, if your parents are alums, you actually would be eligible potentially for in-state tuition depending on your academic criteria. So yeah, that's a huge help. But I, I know I'm at time, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna trade out, I'm gonna let Liz uh, help us finish up here. I was on mute. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Stephen, for that great presentation. And thanks for everyone who joined us live. Uh, for those of you who are joining us live, there is a quick survey at the end, just about four questions. We'd appreciate your feedback. And if you'd like to view a recording of this session or any others, you can do so at www.pacac.org slash virtual. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.